Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Malorn here and I'm here with another wonderful video for you guys today. I am currently in Grizzleheim on my balance wizard and we're going to be talking about the fact that Grizzleheim seems to be quite literally impenetrable. Now this is more uh, storyline based and obviously this is paying attention to the visual details of the game. So this isn't exactly, you know, an objective topic, right? It's not mentioned in the storyline, it's just kind of something that's implied by the visual, you know, aids and just kind of the way that everything is designed and built and set up, right? Um, and the map is actually going to play quite a large part in it. So KI obviously puts a lot of time into the way that they map out their worlds. Um, if you'll notice, for example, with Grizzleheim, we've got all of these cliff sides, right? And this is kind of the first point to this. The cliff sides make an easy target, or make Northgard an easy target for archers. And we're going to be talking about Northgard specifically. Makes them an easy target for archers, right? Except, if we look around, we see that there's gates. And, you know, whenever you're questing through Grizzleheim, these gates are what you use to get to different areas. And on the other side of each gate, maybe, sec you know, separate from Raven Scar, but... You've got like a little raven dude over there, but on each side of these gates, you've got a kind of encampment, right? You've got guards, you know, you've got a little camp set up with some armies, you know, so north guards protected on all sides. If we actually look at the map, you can see the gate there, but then you can also see the cliff side and you see the tunnel, or not the tunnel, you see the uh, pathway behind it. Um, so that kind of implies that in order to actually attack north guard, from the top of those cliffs, they'd have to take out the encampments on either side. Now that also raises the question, well, why don't they just come from back here? Well, they could, but, I mean, technically speaking, the encampment over there, I'm clicking on it right now, it's, uh, what is that, Vigrid, Vigrid Earthland? That one kind of stretches back a little bit, there's like a bunch of little apple trees or something like that, uh, but it, it stretches back into the back, and... This is kind of what I love about KI. They plan the storyline. They plan, you know, the way that the actual graphics are set up. I think it's just kind of something that you have to do in order to make, you know, the various areas of the game work. Otherwise, I feel like there'd be a lot of bugs and stuff. But uh, they make it perfectly match the way that everything looks. So if we're looking at that gate, we can actually, if you kind of remember what everything looks like, in a Merkholm key or in Vigrid or Upland, you can just kind of bring an image up in your head of what's behind that gate. And you'll soon find out, you know, you'll come to realize, like, okay, well, it stretches pretty far back. So clearly they've got everything covered back on that side. So in order for the enemies to attack from above, they'd have to take out all the encampments, which is part of the storyline. That's what they try and do. Uh, North Guard, for whatever reason, seems to be a really big target for everyone in Grizzleheim including Winter Tusk, so uh, there's that. Anyways, so the next one we're going to go to is actually magic. Now, Northgard seems to be pretty heavily protected from magic by various runestones that are more or less strategically placed. Um, we can kind of assume that these two runestones right here protect the, you know, obviously anything that gets past the spiral door it protects it all from, you know, magical forces attacking coming out of the spiral door to wreak havoc on Northgard, right? But not only that, but if you look around the gates of Northgard, you've also got these giant monuments that have runes on them. Now, presumably these runes are also to ward off magic within the actual gates of Northgard themselves. Whether or not there's any kind of magic that could, that could you know, penetrate these defenses, I don't know. You know, obviously this is a very subjective... Well, it's not subjective, but... It's a very, um, these are more guesses than anything else. Obviously, it was never mentioned specifically, but if we're looking at this logically, you've got the gates, right? It's a big wall. It's got spikes coming out of it. And then you've just got these randomly placed stones with literal runes on it. And knowing that Grizzleheim is a world where rune magic is quite literally the magic of the entire world, we can safely assume that that is what that's there for. It is there to protect Northgard 
from magical forces, not only from within the spiral, or not only from coming out of the spiral door, but from all of the areas surrounding, right? The next thing that we're going to talk about, and this, if it wasn't designed the way it was, or the way it is, this would be Northgard's greatest weakness. It's called Nidavellir. Nidavellir is the home to the giants, you know, the Jodens, right? Uh, they kind of, well, no, they're not the giants, they're not the Joden. well, they are the Jodens, that's what they call themselves. It's so weird, because in Noid's mythology, the Jodens are the giants, but in the game, you've got the giants, and then you've got the Jodens, so they're, it, it, it's weird. I don't know if that was intentional, or, you know, maybe they were just running out of names for the bad guys, so they decided to split those two up into different things, but, um, whatever the reason... This palace here, presumably, is to keep the big, bad monsters that are behind these gates. It's to keep them in their place. It's to prevent them from getting out and unleashing their super terrible magical powers on the spiral. Which, most likely, the rune stones that are placed around Northgard would not be able to stop. These are creatures that are supposed to be of, you know, really powerful forms of magic. Forms of magic that... Obviously, you need some pretty heavy defenses to <laughs> defend against. Like, maybe these gates, for example, they might be, I don't know, intertwined with some kind of fancy magic that, you know, holds back the bad guys. In this case, that's the giants or whatever other enemies are behind the gates, because I think only one of them has the giants in it. What is that, the Hall of... No? Is that the Hall of Valor? Yeah, I think it's the Hall of Valor, because Elgrand Warren has, like, six different they've got like a kraken and you've got like an imp or something no 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 no. it's a, a trent and then they've got there's a whole bunch of stuff in hellgrind and then winter deep i can't even remember what's in winter deep but um this gate right here is really freaking big so i'm assuming that that's where the actual giants are um and then obviously you've got these gates over here so there's super powerful things around there you've got these crystals these gigantic crystals that seem to be imitating some kind of magical force, right? I mean, they're very big, they're very pointy, they're clearly very powerful, and, well, obviously they have something to do with the protection, the defenses of this palace that keep these magical creatures behind their barriers. We've also got these little things up here. I mean, that could be anything, but... Because it's never mentioned, it would be safe to assume that it's another way to keep these super powerful creatures in their place. I mean, this whole palace is basically designed for that. It's to keep them locked behind these giant gates. And obviously, storyline-wise, we have to go back there and, you know, take care of them. Because they figured out a way to wreak havoc, you know, without actually leaving the gate. I mean, they've got the, uh, whatever... What are they? What do they call them? They're like the, the giants, the... crap. I forgot the name, but I literally just mentioned it like three minutes ago. Wow. Oh, the Jotunheim! <laughs> They're just really big versions of this guy. Like, that's that's all they are. They're just Grindles. You know, they're really big freaking Grindles. Alright, and they kind of manipulate their Grindle armies around Gurgleheim and stuff. And that's what happens there. Anyways, but the reason that this is Northgard's greatest weakness is because, first off, these creatures are super powerful, and if it wasn't for those gates, Nidavellir is awfully close to Northgard. It is literally right below Northgard. So it would not be hard at all for these giants to just, I don't know, break down the gates if there wasn't the magical barriers, possibly climb up that mountainside and just wreak havoc that no one other than our wizards, obviously, could stop. The next defense to Grizzleheim, the next way that we know that Grizzleheim is supposed to be, like, or that Northgard is supposed to be this super well-protected fortress, right? Kind of the uh, great kingdom of Grizzleheim overall, right? I mean, it, it's clear because everyone wants to attack them. Everyone wants what they have, so... That, that's kind of an obvious sign that they are kind of the envy of the world, right? They're the envy of Grizzleheim. They're what everyone else wants to be but can't. Um, so, what we have here, we have the walls themselves. 
the walls are very, very big. If we are looking at that cliff up there, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, archers would not easily be able to fire upon it because of the fact that they'd have to break through the encampments on the other side first. Um, but if they did make it to the cliffside, these walls likely wouldn't do much to protect them. However, if they decided to launch an assault from the ground and they decided not to put archers up there, they could come through here after breaking through the encampment somehow, come up to the walls, and they'd be ready to fight. But we've got these great big gates here. The walls are ginormous. You've also got these warriors, these bear warriors up here that actually look like wolves. I mean, I'm sorry, K.I., you did a terrible job at making these guys look like bears. But they are supposed to be bears. Uh, this, this is supposed to be a bear right here. He looks more like a really kind of a chubby wolf to me. I mean, you kind of you do see the bear, like what the actual bears look like a little bit too, because you can see that guy right there, Eric Wardroom. I mean, I don't know why there's two different looks for him, but whatever. Um, I guess that's supposed to be a bear when they have like a six pack and abs and stuff, <laughs> like a buff bear or something like that. And then that's just a normal chubby old bear, right? Oh, Lord. Anyways, but you've got the walls, which are a really, really good size. Um, obviously, they're really convenient for uh, warding off attacks. The only thing, the only problem, there's actually two problems, but they're kind of part of the same little thing. There's not enough of these guys. They don't have enough guards in Grizzleheim. They've got maybe ten at most. Possibly. Maybe ten guards at most in the entire freaking North Guard area. Right? I mean, you've got the little dudes right he down here, the merchants. I mean, this, the guy over there, uh, what, what's his name? Eskin the Rune Wand or something. He has a bunch of weapons and stuff, but he's chubby. He is chubby, right? None of these guys are built for war. They're not built for battle. This guy's built for battle, but there's only like 10 of him. If there's a whole army of the Red Claw, as the storyline, you know, as they're called in the storyline, the Red Claw, there's a whole army of them coming down and attacking you. This little force is not going to be enough to protect you. And I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, do a quick uh, glance around so you can see what I mean. There's one guard there. You've got a guard over there. You've got, I think, what, two guards down here, one on each side. So there's two guards right there. Uh, you've got the one dude. He's kind of like the commander, right? Like the general of the North Guard army or something like that. He's standing up here. You know, you got Bjorn Ironclaws. Um, judging by the way that this is, that this guy right here is dressed compared to the rest of the, you know, chub bears of the, of, of Northgard, this guy is a spellcaster, he's a mage, you know, he's got some magic, um, this guy's an explorer, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, but he, he gives you some spells. Uh, these guys would make good guards if it wasn't for the fact that they were on the wrong side of the bridge and they are also facing the wrong direction. Um, that being said, they do have axes, so if there was an attack, I'm sure that they could help out a bit. Uh, I'm not sure how effective they would be, because again, they're chub bears, and I'm not sure if they're trained for, uh, for that. I, what, what is, <laughs> what is this? Is, <laughs> what, judging by the way this guy is dressed, he's, he's got some spells too, but, like, <laughs> I'm not sure what he's supposed to be. I never have been sure about that. Like, he's just a little bear that walks around the entire uh, circle that is Northgard. It doesn't make any sense for him to be there, but there he is. Um, anyways, you've also got two more over here, and then, like I said, you've got the two up there. So, you know, ten at most, right? They're not very well defended, not even close. I mean, they need more guards. Oh, oh, maybe it's like ten or twelve. So, I, I put 12 max, because I wasn't actually counting as we were doing those, but here's two more. Either way, if there was a whole army coming, they wouldn't be able to ward it off. I know that it's, obviously, KI is trying to kind of imply that the army is there, but, you know, because it would look, I guess, ridiculous. Obviously, they can't, you know, just load the entire North Guard er area up with guard NPCs, you know, so... uh that that's just kind of what they did. They placed a few here and there and kind of scattered them around. Um, but that being said, I'm sure that these little things right here are probably the barracks for the bears. So there's there's definitely got to be some armies here, right? You know that there is an army built in the North Guard somewhere. And if I were to guess, 
it would be in these little uh, things here, which probably go underground. So I guess KI is trying to imply like, hey, yeah, there is an army. We couldn't, obviously, because it would look stupid for decoration purposes. We couldn't just stick them, you know, have them all lying around everywhere. So it just, you know, kind of filled the place up with guard NPCs. That would look kind of bad, honestly. I mean, everyone would be like, why? Right? But I'm sure that they're down there somewhere. It would be stupid of North Guard not to have an army. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is the river. Now, the river is actually a really good defense mechanism because it would slow the enemies down if they tried to descend down the cliff. And then you've also got the waterfall itself, which, you know, kind of uh, limits the actual accessibility from behind if they were to, you know, decide against an attack with archers and instead try and sneak in during the night, right? A sneak attack on North Guard. That would probably be the only way you could actually take North Guard out. Um, I'm not sure how well that would turn out. I'm not. It's never mentioned, you know, whether or not their guards are like 24 or 24 seven type situation or not. So uh, that being said, that would be the best way to do it. But you'd have to scale down the walls like freaking ninjas, and um, you know the waterfall has places some limits on that and then obviously the river itself places limits on that as well because it slows you down as you descend and I am assuming that there's always going to be some guards so if they hear you walking through the water or they happen to see you because the river is slowing you down quite a bit and they are perched up on these walls then you're not gonna be walking away from that situation you know it's not gonna trail well for you um I just realized it's always nighttime in Grizzleheim. I, I, I'm not sure why that is, but yeah. Anyway, the next one that I kind of want to point out, and this is this is really the last one. Um, this has to do with the spiral door itself. So if we are going to assume that you can't really bring an army through the spiral door, because in, in Wizard 101 there's really no reference of whole armies going through spiral doors. There's references of armies traveling through the spiral to different worlds, you know, Old Cobb, you know, his little shadow minions, right? Uh, presumably Morganth didn't bring her armies through, you know, through spiral doors and stuff. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that was the case with Celestia, but anyways, I'm assuming that it wouldn't be very practical to do it even if you could. Uh, Morganth might be an exception considering her army, you know, it was pretty dang big. Right, I mean, and apparently her army had some history with the places she invaded, like, I mean, Celestia, for example, uh, her armies had been fighting with the Celestians, and they had said it was for, like, thousands of years, which I don't get that. I don't understand how that works exactly, but I don't know if Morganth was supposed to just be really, really freaking old. I'm not sure, but apparently that, that was the case. Like, like, they had attacked Celestia thousands of years ago, and they had been at war for, like, thousands of years, and Morganth is secretly thousands of years old. Although, I have to admit, you know, if I was into that kind of stuff, no, I'm joking. But, in all honesty, it wouldn't be practical to bring whole armies through the spiral door. Right? I mean, it's a door. Sure, it's magic, and it can carry people around the spiral, but again, it's just a door. And then... To top it off, you know, some worlds have really narrow passages like this. So just imagine all of these people, you know, piling out the spiral door, right? Whole armies, they'd be knocking each other over, they'd be tumbling about, you know, this goes downhill, so there's no way that they're all going to make it through nice and peacefully. You've got two guards up here, so, I mean, they can alert the guys up there in North Guard, um, assuming that there is some pile up and some, you know, some of the more, uh, some of the bad guys go down as they come through the spiral door, some of the armies, right? Some people are going to fall off this. I mean, the fact that this, that the spiral door is placed on a separate island entirely is kind of a really good uh, defense as well. I mean, obviously the rainbow bridge doesn't help, but um, I'm assuming that the rainbow bridge probably is something that uh, North Guard could pretty easily take care of. I mean, again, it is just an assumption, but because it's not an actual bridge, if you look around, everything else is built with wood. Right? Everything else is built with wood or stone. 
which makes you wonder why the bridge itself is built with a rainbow. You know, I mean, it does kind of, it's like, okay, well, maybe it would be easier to make a rainbow bridge disappear with some kind of rune magic than it would be to, you know, constantly lower um, a drawbridge or something like that. It just, you have to think about that for a sec, because there is magic in Grizzleheim, and drawbridges tend to, you know, they tend to close pretty slowly, so just having a bridge that magically disappears on its own, you know, immediately, instantly, would be really convenient. Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to escape the island then, you know, unless they could fly. But, um, other than that, I'm assuming that if Old Cobb were to attack Northgard, obviously they wouldn't stand a chance, because... You know his shadow, his little shadow army didn't use the spiral doors. They were like, nah, we're gonna fly, buddy. You know, we're gonna fly around the spiral or just teleport, you know, from world to world. Which also brings an idea to my mind. Um, because our wizards became gods, became scions, you know, the scion of Bartleby in Imperial Part 2, I feel like we should eventually get some godlike powers. Obviously, we got godlike powers for like five minutes at the end of Imperial Part 2, but I mean like some uh, unique abilities that are only available to people above a certain level, like tele—I don't know—teleporting from you know one world to the next without actually having to go to the spiral door. I know that Ki makes a lot of money with teleport tapestries, and you know, obviously, people spend a lot of time crafting them, so that. You know, it gets people on the game, and it gets some player activity where there may not previously have been any. Who knows? But it would be convenient for people at a certain level. Obviously, I don't mean teleport you to every area of a world. I can get where they'd be, be kind of iffy with that. You know, like, I don't want to be able to teleport straight to Winter Tusk. I just need to be able to teleport to Grizzleheim from my backpack. That would make sense. Because we're supposed to be super powerful, and clearly, you know... You know old Cobb's not going through the spiral doors, you know? <laughs> Malastare did, but he didn't bring his army with him. He went to Grizzleheim, and the army was already there. He just took control of it. You know, he went in to take control of an army that, you know, previously had belonged to the Dragon Titan. The reason Dragon Spire was destroyed isn't because Malastare destroyed it. It was because the, what was it, the original Lords of Dragon Spire or whatever, they had also tried to tame the Dragon Titan. They had failed, the Dragon Titan destroyed everything and unleashed his armies on the freaking world. Then kind of went dormant on top of the, you know, on top of the giant mountain thingy. The, uh, I forgot what that's called, but he just, I guess he fell asleep or something. I, I'm not even sure what happened, but he just kind of let Malastare walk in there and just steal his army out from under him. So, uh, Malastare suddenly had a bunch of dragon minions that he could send around everywhere. But, I mean, he didn't bring his entire army through the spiral door, right? He may bring one or two, like the dragons that he brought for the tutorial in Withered City, you know, but he didn't bring a whole army with him. And the undead army that he unleashed on Withered City was already there, that was already there too. Also, I'm assuming that if it's a ghost, it doesn't need a spiral door, you know? Anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe for more amazing videos. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time on my, ne on my next video. It'll most likely be something about rare housing, because I know that um, a lot of you have actually I've had some people uh, express further interest in those videos, so I will be releasing more of those. It won't be the uh, only topic. Obviously, I'm going to definitely branch out. Um, especially considering how limited rare housing actually is to talk about. Um, what I might do is, after I'm done with the rare housing in general, I might start going into like crafted housing. Because there's a lot of crafted housing recipes in the game that are really freaking cool, but no one really seems to know about. For example, in Chrysalis, there is an item called the Kermes Fire. And it's a reference to Greek fire from Greek mythology. I'll, you know, talk about it talk about Greek fire and uh, Kermes fire more in uh, another video. I'll probably do a whole video on those because that's actually a really interesting topic for me. I love the whole Greek fire thing. Um, there's some, there's one really cool aspect about Greek fire that I'll go into in that video whenever I make it um, that will probably shock you guys. I mean, there's a lot of stuff from our history that uh, there's some really interesting things that haven't quite... Um, 
been discovered yet, I guess you'd say. Like, people know about them, but there's certain aspects, certain characteristics of it that are still unknown. That being said, like I said, I'll see you guys next time, and peace out.